Hello and welcome to Mission Código. In today's video, we're going to continue our tutorial on Flask. This is a lightweight web development framework for Python. In this tutorial, we're going to focus on the use of templates for your HTML within your web app in Flask. This is going to improve the way your users interact with your web app, whether it is to see some data or to get data from you. And the Flask framework allows you to do a lot of stuff really simple, like using loops and conditionals within your HTML. This is the second video in the full series of Flask tutorials. In the previous tutorial, we saw how to set up your environment and how to get started with your web app. If you haven't done that, you can take a look at the video right here and just come back to this one when you're finished. Or if you just want to get started with this video and learning about templates, you'll find in the description a link to the repository in GitHub for this particular project. And you'll find all the information that you need to get started and just follow along in this tutorial. So you should have this file and the next thing that we're gonna do is just launch our server to see what we have. I'm already in the right directory, so I'm just gonna say flask run. And I'm gonna copy my link here. Uh, if you're not sure on how to launch the server, these are the commands that you're gonna need. But if you want more information, just take a look at the previous tutorial. So now I can paste this in Chrome or whatever Explorer you want to use. And there we go. We have this Hello Mission Código, which is our index page. And we have a couple of others. So take, let's take a look at the About. And there we go. This is our About page. So now, in order to make our app a little better, we, we want to up the game in the HTML department. So the first thing we're going to work with is our index page. The way Flask view functions work is that they must return an HTML. And if we wanted to make this look a little prettier, we need a lot of more stuff, but it would be confusing to just put it all in there. So we're going to get rid of it and use a function that Flask has available for us. It's called render template, and we're just going to import it first. Then I'm just going to use that to return. And as a parameter, I'm going to give it the name of the HTML file that I want to use. So I'm going to just going to name it index.html. That's all I'm going to need now. And obviously we don't have this index HTML file yet. So let's get ahead and do it. For that, we are going to go to our tutorial folder. And I'm going to create a new directory there called templates. Now the name here needs to be exactly this because that's what uh, Flask is going to look for. So just be sure to have it correctly. Then inside here, I'm going to build my index.html file. Very nice. All right, so here we have an example of a little bit more complicated HTML file, which is not really that much. Uh, so let's save it and just refresh our web app to see how that looks. So if I click refresh, not much has changed. We have this Flask tutorial title and welcome to Mission Código Flask app. So now we can start adding stuff to our HTML. I want to add a menu that's going to allow us to see all the different pages that we have available on our web app. And I also want to have like this header. So let's do that. All right, so let's take a look at what changed here. The first thing we have now a, a little bit of a header, which is here, which is the, an H1 header saying Mission Código and subscribe, which you should do. Next, we added our menu, which has just got like two placeholders for two different locations, which is going to be our index page and the about page. Now here on the top, we have a little bit of the style that we want to give to these different uh, parts of our HTML. First is for the H1, which is going to affect this one. And another one is for the menu and stuff like color, the size of the text and this whole stuff. Now uh, let's take a look at how this looks. I'm going to save it and then I, I can refresh my app and take a look it changed dramatically now we have this menu on the top we can click even though nothing works yet we're going to change that later we have our banner that is saying you know subscribe to, to the channel and you you should do that now going into the details of how to do this or other stuff it's out of scope for this tutorial so if you're interested in learning about html just let me know in the comments and we'll do something about it but for the moment just know that you can use any html that's valid in this template and it should work all right we got our index so let's take a look at the about page uh, it's still pretty you know blah so let's do something about it okay i want to copy the index html i'm gonna paste it in the templates folder and now I'm going to rename this to about and we have an HTML now. So let's update our app.py file and we, I'm going to go here, get rid of the previous HTML and do the same thing. Render template and I'm going to give it as a parameter the string to the HTML file that I want to use, which is about.html. Oh, get rid of it. 
that should be enough. And then on the about page, I'm going to change this to the previous text that I had. This is our about page and let's get rid of this H1. I'm going to save it and I'm going to refresh the about page. And what just happened was what we expected, right? We have the menu the same way, our banner. And now we have, this is our about page here, the text that we just added. And that's looking pretty good. It was really fast. We just copied and pasted some stuff. But what would happen if we wanted to change the text of our banner? Let's say here, instead of subscribe, subscribe now. I would have to go here and change it. And then I can refresh. But if I go back to my index page, then it's that change is not there because it's an independent HTML. So you can see now that there's a big problem here. We have repeated HTML parts in different files. That means if we want to change one thing, we just have to go and change it in every single HTML file, which is not convenient. There's a lot of errors that could happen and it's difficult to maintain and just remember anything that you have to change. And there's a functionality in Flask that allows you to fix this problem, which is called inheritance of these HTML templates. And the way that this is going to work is that you're going to have a template that it's going to have all the information, the HTML, that is going to be shared through different HTML pages. In order to start, I'm just going to copy one of these files, paste it, and I'm going to rename it to base. So it's going to be called base HTML. So up until now, it's exactly the same. But every time I open a different page or URL, I want certain things to be different. For example, I want this title to be different. And obviously I want the content, which is right here to be different as well. But I would like to have the same header and the same menu without having to change it everywhere. Every time I want to do something different. Flask templates use a language that is called Jinja, you know, like Ninja, but with a J instead of an N. And that allows you to do really cool stuff. It allows you to define blocks that are going to be changed in different pages and allows you to use for loops and conditionals or ifs. We're going to do a couple of examples of each one of these so you can get a grasp of how they work. And let's get started with the content blocks. And the first thing we want to change is the title. So instead of saying just Flask app, I wanted to change to say like home or about or whatever it is that it's the page I'm currently on. So we're going to define a block in Jinja and this is done using a curly bracket. Then inside I'm going to do percentage symbol and I'm going to need two of these and then I'll say block and then I'm going to give the variable name that I want to use later. So this is going to be called title that marks the beginning of a new block. And then you just have to mark the end very similarly. So I'm going to copy and paste and instead of log, you're going to say end block without a space and we don't need the variable name anymore. Then I'm just going to do like hyphen. So it looks a little prettier. And that's it. That's all you need to define a new block. And this could be changed every time you inherit from this base template. And we're going to take a look at that. But first, we want to do the same for the content. Moments later. So in order to use this, we're going to go to the about page, which is, which is the one that we're working on. And I'm just going to get rid of everything. And now we want to inherit from the base template that we just wrote. So you do curly bracket, percentage symbol, the keyword extends, and then inside quotes, the name of the HTML that you want to extend which is base.html in this case, and then you close the whole thing. After that, we, we need to do two things. We need to define the title and the content. And here it is. By now, I think you already understand kind of the format of Jinja to define and to use blocks. So we do the same. We give it the name of the variable that we want to change. And inside of that, we're going to put all the HTML that we want to replace this block. Pretty cool, right? And now we want to do the similar thing for our other variable, which is content. Here it is. We're just following the same format. Let's save it and now refresh our about page. And we're sure we're using the base template because now the, the, the title of our application changed here. We have about and then Flask app tutorial. If now we take a look at our index page, we're still not using the template, obviously, because if we look at our HTML here, we're clearly not extending from our base template. So I'm just going to copy everything we did on our about page. I'm going to paste it at the beginning. And then I'm just going to change these things to whatever it's needed. As you can see now, we ended up with a very similar HTML file to the about, but we're just changing those blocks that are defined in our template right here, like the title and the content. And you can define as many as these blocks as you want. I think you, you get the point. And if I refresh this, now we get how it changed. If I decide I don't like the now anymore, it's just forcing people to do stuff. I can go to my base template, change this, 
then it works on, on, the, on the index page and also in the about page and just by changing it in one single place. So it's pretty convenient and allows you to do a lot of stuff and maintain your application with minimal effort. So I'm going to write a new function that's going to allow us to, to see some messages. Let's say see messages. And this doesn't require any input for our viewer. We're just going to say messages as well. And in here, we're going to return a, a template. And now we need to have an HTML, which is going to be very similar to, to the about. So I'm just going to copy and paste it here. Let's just change it change here messages and the content is going to change dramatically so these are your messages pretty cool let's check that this works uh so messages and there we go we have the base of what we're going to work with now let's go back to our app and for this we're going to need a couple of things more moments later for this function i'm going to hard code a little bit of data now this is my user which is i'm going to give it just my name and we have a list of tasks this is each one of them is a dictionary where we have our text which is going to be the task that we want to do and the status for that one which is in progress for all of them right now usually this kind of data usually comes from another external source like an api or a database and that's going to be something that we're going to cover on the next tutorial but for the moment we want to learn how to handle once we already have the data so we can hard code it and just use it we need to pass it to our template we can do that pretty simply by just adding here another variable i'm going to call it user then equal user comma and tasks equal tasks now we're done with our python side and we have to go to our html messages file we want to display a text here these are the messages and then we want all the messages to be displayed no matter how many of them they are and I know what you're thinking. This could be very easily done with the loop. And you're correct. And Jinja allows you to do that. We're going to open our curly brackets, percentage sign. Let's do it again here. Then we're going to say for. Then we define a variable name, just like we do with Python. So this is going to be a task in my tasks. So I'm just going to be looping the same way that I would do in Python. And it's very similar to the syntax, as you can see. After that, we're just going to do some stuff with that loop and close it. Now inside of here, we're going to do whatever we want with our different tasks. And what we want is to display it. So we're going to just use some uh, basic HTML. So now we have some HTML that's going to allow us to define some style for that particular line that we want. Then we have our font size and we want to display our task. Let's refresh our page and see how that looks. As you can see, we're just displaying the full dictionary, which, which is not what we want. So let's just change it to display only the text. All right, so you just say task.text, save it, refresh, and now we got our message. Now, that was pretty cool and really powerful stuff if you think about it, because now you can display as many messages as required. They're all going to be handled correctly because you're just using a loop. Now, I changed a little bit here so it, cho it shows us that it's the task and then what's the status of that task, which now is in progress. And you can do this in a lot of different ways and just make it prettier using HTML. But again, that's not the focus of this tutorial. So I'm just going to keep it simple here. But what happens if you want to display stuff differently depending on something? Let's say the status of the current task. And for this, I'm going to need a little bit of your, of your help. If you take a look at this third task, it says like this video. So go ahead and do me a favor, like the video. Cool, thank you. Now we can change this to complete. And if I can learn how to type, all right. So I just noticed that the background color is not doing anything. So let's do this, change it for color and just give it a different one. Now I'm gonna save it, uh, go back here, refresh. And we have like a light blue color. And what I want to do is change the color to green if the status is complete. Uh, this can be done with an if clause or a conditional. Open like this, as we already know, say if. Then in here, we want to set the condition that we want to check. So if this is true, I want to set the color. So now that we, we know what's going to happen if, if the condition is true, we want to give another condition in case this is not true. And yeah, you probably already imagine we're going to say else, percentage, and now we want to copy this thing and put this color code and to close things up, we're just going to end the if clause. And that's all you're going to need to get the if working. Uh oh, wait. So you need remember to get this 
um, also at the end here, which I was forgetting. And this is not a good variable name, so I'm just going to change it to my color. And this is going to be the variable name that I'm defining. So then I'm just going to have to use it here. Using a variable has a little bit of a different syntax from the if and the block and the for. So we need to have double curly brackets. I'm going to do that here. And inside I'm going to say my color. And I think that should make the trick. So let's save this and retry. All right. I, well, so there's an error here. Um, it seems like I'm missing a percentage sign here. And I also just noticed these colors need to be strings. So we're going to just put it in between quotes for you too. I'm going to save it, refresh and take a look at this. Our status complete. Now it's looking different. It has a, a green color compared to the other ones, which are in blue. And now before finishing this tutorial, there's two more things that I want to leave you with. And the first one, if you take a look, uh, these links are not working. So let's fix that. So we're going to go into our base HTML. And as you can see here, we have our, our menu. So at this point, we only have a couple of, you know, placeholders for, for the items on our menu, which we can see here, flask app and about. I could just add the HTML path that's coming from here and it should work. I could do this like about, do that. And then if I save it, refresh the app, then if I click the about button and the flask app, they take us to the different corresponding pages. And that's pretty cool. But then what happens if I decide to change this to something else about me? If, if I go here and click on the about, it's not going to work. It, it's kind of hard to keep track of things like this when you change something and where you have to go and update it. So it's kind of a, a, a pain in the ass. But fortunately, there's a very intelligent way to go around this. We're going to open two brackets to use a variable and then we're going to say URL for. So this is a function for uh, within Flask that allows us to get the URL for some function. So inside of this, we're going to give uh, inside of quotes because we have double quotes here. We're going to give the name of the function. So in this case, it's going to be hello. And I'm going to put it here. We're going to do exactly the same for the about page. Remember, this should be the name of the function that is being decorated here to be turned into a view flask function. We save that in our base HTML. We go back, refresh. And if I click about flask app, now it works. And the cool thing is now if I decide to change this for some reason again to about refresh flask app about and now it works without having to change anything in your HTML or in your Python file. That is pretty cool and powerful. This is the kind of thing and little tips that allow you to be very efficient with your time and it's going to be easier to maintain your app in the future, especially as it grows. Now for the final thing that I want to uh, cover in this tutorial is something that you might have noticed. So if we look at our HTML for the base template, then we'll see that we have this style part. And if you're familiar with HTML, you know that usually we can separate the style part from the HTML into a CSS file. So if for some reason we wanted to create another base template, like some template that we're going to inherit from that's different to our base.html. And if we wanted to use the same style, then we would go into the same trouble that we had at the beginning, where we have the same code in two different places. And that, that is just not a good practice. So we can do that. Let's separate it and just put it into a different file so we can reuse it as we need it. Very similar to the templates, we're going to go into our tutorial folder. I'm going to create a folder there that is going to be called static. And inside of there, I'm going to create another directory called CSS. And inside of that one, I'm going to create a file and I'm just going to call it main.css. So the CSS file is going to look like this. Pretty much all that we did was bring this, all the things that we had in, in the style part and just put it here and just give it different names. So I'm calling it a div.banner and nav a is just the same. Then I'm going to go into my base and we're going to change a little bit of things. First, we have to tell it where to find the style sheet. And the way we do it is exactly the same way that you would in any HTML. The only difference is that for our reference, we're going to use again our very useful function URL for. We're going to give it the name of the folder, which is static. And then for file name, we're going to use CSS, which is a folder we're inside of static and the name of the CSS file. So main.css. Then we can start using it in my banner. I'm just going to call it class banner. 
so it's going to pull the style from here and if i save my base file then i come back here refresh and there we go it's using our css file without any problems and now if i create another template that i'm gonna inherit others from i can also just reference this and and i don't have to rewrite the style in every single one of those templates pretty cool and powerful stuff that we're using here with flask and we're just making our app look better and we're gonna keep improving our app as we just keep going because we're just starting to scratch the surface of what's possible using flask and python to develop web apps and in our next video which i'm gonna put right here we're gonna take a look at everything related to databases how to create one how to read and write to it and with that we're gonna be able to remove the hard-coded stuff that we have in our current app and just start creating some very interesting stuff so i hope you're enjoying this tutorial smash the like button if you are thanks for watching and i'll see you in the next one